All right, so I'm back. It's been a while. I'm uh, making how to make a thumbnail on YouTube, which is actually pretty easy, depending on how advanced you want to get with it. So let's start out with opening a new file. So go up to file and new. And then it's been a while since I've used the program. So like this is all new to me. But on the top left, it should be 1280 by 720. That's the thumbnail size for YouTube. So you can name it. And then once you name it, you hit create. And then here you go. So you got your blank canvas. I'm going to show you the way I am starting to make my um, thumbnails on my other channel. You should check it out if you want to watch gaming videos. I uh, My other channel is will be down in the description below. It's just Cambit. Um, but the videos are pretty funny on there, we could say, but anyways, let's get a picture. So find a picture online. So what I try to do, I try to try to find one that is, um, 1280 by 720. So there's no like problems with, um, the quality. All right. So once you find the image that you want to do, right click on it, copy image, or you could save it to your computer and open it that way, but I'm just going to copy it and then paste it into my, what do we call it? I don't even know, honestly, <laughs> but yeah, so here we are, pictures on the canvas and we're ready to start editing it. So I, there's a technique I like to do now, like I figured it out. So I'm going to duplicate this layer by right clicking on it and going down to duplicate layer. So now I have two of these images. I'm going to command Z to undo that. Now. They're overlapping each other. So what I want to do, I want to go up to edit, retransform, and then I want to take the top, move it down just a little bit, and then take the sides and do the same to give it like a border effect almost. And you'll see what it'll look like at the end. All right. So once they're all even, you can hit the check mark and this is what you have so far. So it doesn't look the best but I'll show you how to make it look better. So what I like to do is I like to go to the layer in the very back. So I'm gonna name this first. So when you right click on the layer, you can uh, rename it by going, where is it? I don't even know. Wait, can you not rename it? Oh yeah, yeah. Okay, so when you wanna rename it, you can double click on the layer and type what you want. I'm just gonna do it for the purpose of this video. Usually. I don't um, label them. I probably should, but uh, front, I don't even know. I'm just going to put front. Okay. So now we have this and we have them labeled. So select the background layer, go up to filter, blur, and then like box blur. So for some reason I chose the wrong one. So let me go back. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I chose the wrong, I completely named them the wrong things. So, okay background so yeah easy fix there we go so now it's correct so now you want to go up to filter after you selected the background layer blur and then box blur you could choose some of the others but I just do this one just because and you can keep blurring it the blurring is kind of weird right here you can choose how blurry you want it to be so I choose I make it kind of like pretty blurry actually kind of like that so five and then in the front you want to blur it as well but not as much oops all right so go here filter or blur box okay so i'm gonna blur the front one too so i'm gonna go to blur box blur and see it's kind of blurry but it doesn't really stand out that much so i'm gonna go to the background layer go to filter sharpen sharpen and then if you want to sharpen it more you'd hit sharpen more and then I also want to go to the front layer. And if I, you want the vibrance to be, uh, to pop out, then you go to image adjustments, vibrance. So you don't want to make it too crazy like that. Like that's way too much, but you can get it a decent amount to where it looks normal, but not too much like that. And also it's nice to, um, change the brightness and contrast. So go to image adjustments, brightness, and contrast. 
And here you could choose how bright it is and the contrast. Again, you don't want to use it too much because it'll just look really weird. So, yeah, like that. That's pretty good, you know. Well, it's starting to look pretty decent. Okay, so next I want the background to stand out a little more. So I'm going to go up to Filter, Sharpen, Smart Sharpen. So basically it gives you the option of how much you want to sharpen it. So I'm going to go up a bit just to see, like... Again, I don't want it to be too crazy, but I want it to stand out. So I'm going to do, there we go. So that's not too bad. Next, I'm going to add the text. So go over to the text tool and then up at the top, you could choose the font, the size, and then I'm not really sure. I guess these just change the look of it. Center align it, right align it, left align it, all that stuff up here. Okay, so once you find one you want, click on it, and then make sure your text tool is selected and you can click on the canvas. So once you click on it, the text is probably gonna be pretty small, so you go up to the size and you can either use this little slider or you could type it in manually. I'm just gonna use the slider because it's easier. So around 173 is fine. And then also make sure the layer is at the very top or the bottom. Because then it's going to, I mean, wait, what am I talking about? Okay, make sure the, the layer is on the very top. Okay, so now I'm going to type something. It's a little too big, so I'm going to use the slider. Or right, once I select it, by hitting Control A, I can select all of it and then move it down. So I got the first one. I'm going to duplicate it. Move it down here. Go back to the text tool, highlight it, and then I'm going to change it to tutorial. So I can have two things of text. I should probably do that at the end. So actually I'm gonna do that at the end. So I'm gonna delete the layer by clicking on it and hitting delete. Or if you right click on it, you can hit delete. Either one works. Okay, so you have your thumbnail. Double click on the layer and go to color overlay or gradient overlay, we'll do gradient overlay. What I like to do is I like to make the scale like a little bit bigger, not too much, like around 154. And then I like to go to inner glow by checking the box, going over to it. And then you're gonna see all these settings. So change the blend mode to normal, go down the color, change it to white opacity turn that to 100 and then you can adjust the spread and size it doesn't really have to be perfect but you'll know what looks good and what doesn't so like so you know let's make it by clicking on this gradient you can kind of change what it looks like i don't know why i just did that wait not sure what just happened there wait okay this is weird anyways uh, just leave it like that okay so this doesn't look too bad uh, if you want to put like a background a little bit so it doesn't like blend in with the back you can either put like a stroke which is just a line and change the size of it if you want it to be like thick or or you could use an outer glow which can kind of work as a shadow if you change the color to black and then change it to normal opacity to 100 like on the last one so it kind of looks like a, a shadow, but if you want to just go for a shadow, go to drop shadow and you can see, you can adjust the angle of it. So, um, not really a big fan of the shadow to be honest, but I prefer the outer glow. You can also change the colors to make it like suit you better. So like make it red. If you prefer, like if it's a red theme, you can go for red on everything. You know, you get the idea, basically. It's just kind of like, you just got to mess with things and find what you like. Okay, so after messing around with it for a little bit, I got this. And I'm going to add a drop shadow just to make it stand out a little more. So, we got the thumbnail. The font, you know, you may not be a fan, but there's plenty of fonts. So, I'm going to right click on the first layer and hit duplicate layer. So this way, I'll have two of the layers with the same effects on it rather than making both like before you do any effects and then having to do it later. Now we have both. 
and when you select the type tool you can highlight it and change it to whatever you want so i'm gonna change it to tutorial tutorial okay there we go now we got thumbnail tutorial and you can change the color for this one a little more like you could change this one to be you know green for complementary color or whatever you want to do you can do it really this is great software for for free i've been i used to use it now i have photoshop so i don't really use it anymore but so now we have this so there's only a few more things you can do i mean you can do a ton of things but i'm gonna do a few more things i'm gonna try to blur this background a little more so I'm going to go to the blur okay so now I'm going to mess with this a little bit. So I'm going to double click the front layer, which is this background, not the border. I'm going to hit gradient overlay. I'm going to click on that box, go up to blend mode, hit multiply, and then go down to style and hit radial and then hit reverse. So now you kind of have a greenish tint or you could do red, you know, red. Just to give it that, you know, like a tint. And also you could probably do that for the background as well, just so it doesn't look awkward. You know, you can just mess around with it. It doesn't have to be like this, but this is just some basics that will help you make a nice looking thumbnail and stand out so people like to click on your videos. But anyways, that's been it. If you want to sub to my gaming channel, you can. The link will be in the description. Um, I'm about to upload a video on there too. It's kind of interesting, but anyways, thank you guys for watching. See you later.